Hey YouTubers, this is Old John. Today I'm going to uh, work on putting my new uh, snow blade together for my L130 John Deere riding mower. Uh, this is the 8th or 9th of uh, January 2014. Last week we had 7 inches of snow and we're getting snow more today so the range, the long range forecast for this area is more snow here west of St. Louis. So, decides time to uh, stop relying on my neighbor to blade off my driveway. And so, I got this from uh, Home Depot, ordered it on like Sunday and got it on Wednesday. So, great service. Um, it's the 46 inch. And it's kind of considered generic. It's supposed to fit the L100 series, and my mower is an L130. So I basically um, first kind of laid out things here, and I don't have every thing uh, laid out, but I kind of laid out things the way they do on their um, on their manual try to get things oriented. The uh, screws and the accessories I've got laid out here. Apologize for this crappy camera work, but uh, my uh, player that I normally use is broken, so I'm using my webcam from my laptop. Um, pretty much everything came as ordered. I'm missing two screws though, and I got a couple extras here, some extra uh, nuts and a screw. Like I said, um, I laid, laid things out kind of the way the manual, here's this picture, they have really good details I think of uh, things laid out and lettered and, and then described. Here's all the uh, screws and bolts and accessories and they're all labeled and then a nice table and then uh, I think pretty decent instructions. One thing about these instructions, uh, they letter everything on these items, uh, but they're not they're not lettering them based on the parts lists. So they give you dimensions of the screws and so forth. And so then I just went through and and wrote down um, what letter that represents, just to kind of help me. You may not be able to see this, see it on here. But I, yeah, I wrote down below the bolts what uh, letter that actually represents. Then I can go back to this parts list and identify it. So don't get confused when it says A and B and C in these pictures. They're just applying to the the uh, items in the picture itself and not back to the parts lists because that can be confusing and I noticed on the, uh, where the on the Home Depot site where these uh, where the customer comments there was confusion there and somebody pointed out that that don't go by those okay we're going to start off by putting the uh, blade edge piece on um, and it's nice heavy material. This um, blade and so forth is a pretty nice heavy steel. Uh, anyway, this goes on with two uh, five by five sixteenths by three quarter inch carriage bolts and five sixteenths uh, lock nuts. I put the one here to kind of secure it.
and put the other one on the left end here. like so and tighten those down okay now we're going to install the uh, two skid shoes and they go on the bottom of the blade down here and if you notice they have this a long slot which allows them to be slid up and down in adjustment but um, you have to be careful here because there's two two sizes of carriage bolts used. The top one um, is a 5 16 by 3 quarter and then the bottom one is a longer one. It's 5 16 by an inch. And also here we have to use washers. Like so, so I'll go ahead and tighten those down and put on the other one. Okay, now we're going to install the uh, reinforcement plate. <clears throat> it goes on the back of the blade. There are four obvious holes. And there again, we're using these same 5 16 by 3 quarter inch carriage bolts. This is pretty much all we've used so far, except the one time we used the uh, one inch long 5 16 carriage bolt. But anyway, lifting up the bottom, get them started. There's four. Um, doesn't tell you which way is up, but this these appear to be in the center and there's a reinforcement rib here. I'm putting it up on top so I think that's going to be correct. So anyway, I'll go ahead and tighten these down. Now we're going to work on the push <coughs> channel assembly. But first we have to uh, join the two angle lock bars. Got two of them here. You gotta make sure you line them up correctly. Small hole on top. I'm gonna put going with bigger carriage bolts this time. Um, one and a quarter inch. And then the lock nut or washer, and then the uh, 3 8 inch nut. This is a regular nut, it's not a lock nut. I got four extra lock nuts that were this size, so I'm assuming it's not those because it doesn't say it doesn't say lock nut. So then you want to put on this. Um, cable mount bracket and it's showing going on an angle like this and it's lined up so the hole is square and it lines up with the square hole in the bottom so it has to be on an angle <coughs> so now this goes down from the top instead of the other one on the end goes on the bottom. So anyway, gotta put the lock nut on, washer, and then the regular screw also. So I'll tighten those down now. And then next we're gonna work on the, uh, put this on the push channel assembly. 
Okay, now we're going to take the uh, <coughs> two lock angle lock bars we just put together. Um, I'm going to put them on this um, push channel assembly. That's what this is. It's a pretty large piece. And it's got a rotating piece here that's already attached. So we're going to uh, insert the spring. And you want to put it down like this because it's got to be oriented. This end has to be pointing in this direction. So you put that in like that. <coughs> Then we're going to take the brackets and install them like this. And they're going to go down <coughs> into this hole, into the slot, so this can be adjusted. You'll be able to pull this back and then rotate this. So, okay, I made this uh, harder than it should be because I didn't pay close attention but on these brackets there's two holes it's one on the bottom and the one in the middle and I was trying to connect the spring and the one on the middle and that's very difficult so anyway so we simply insert the spring like so and then slide it down into the slot like that, then we turn it over. Now we're going to insert this long three quarter inch, well, it's three and a quarter by quarter inch um, bolt, hex head bolt. And you have to use these spacers. But it goes like that. Then the other one goes on this side, and then you have a quarter inch lock nut. So, I'll go ahead and complete that. Okay, got the um, these two spacers on. This is a tight fit going through these brackets here. The hole is not quite perfect on each one, and if you, they're not lined up exactly, so I kind of had to tap this through with a hammer. <clears throat> but anyway, I got it, so now we turn it over and install this um, spring mount rod. It's a large thing, you can't miss it. We got to take these <clears throat> These pall nuts, 3 8 inch pall nuts in the end. And you got to tap those on with a hammer. There we go. Okay, you put the pall, pall nut on one end. Then we extend the rod through the hole closest to the brackets here. And then put the pile nut on the other end. Probably have to turn this on its side to do it. There we go. Got it. Okay, now we're going to install the uh, this device onto the the blade, and first we take the um, um, blade pivot shaft, and we're going to put the um, eighth inch, one of the eighth inch cotter pins in here where it makes the bend, and the reason for that is because we're going to be sliding this into the 
to this push uh, bracket and it's going to stop it from going all the way in. And once we get it in, then we're going to put the other cotter pin on the other end also. So I'll do that now. Okay, now we're going to attach the push channel I've been working on to the backing plate. This is going to sit right in here and there's holes you line up on both sides. And that's where this big pin is going in. And we put in from the other side and here's the cotter pin which is going to stop it from sliding in too far. So we slide it in pointing up. And it's got grooves in these holes which you have to line up. There we go. And then we put the other cotter pin in here to hold it in. Like so. Okay, now we're going to work with the spring and then attach it to the blade and the push thing that we just put on. Got to take this plastic, pull out the threaded bolt, take off the plastic tip and the first screw, or nut I should say. And we want the other nut threaded on to one inch. So it needs to come in about a quarter. Okay, now we're going to hook this spring onto the push mechanism, onto that long silver shaft that we put in. And then we're going to thread the, you have to push up on the thing, the spring, I mean the uh, push bracket. And then we put our screw back on. And then you put the plastic tip back on, like so. Okay, now we're going to attach the cable to the push assembly. And this cable, there's two ends, of course, to it. And we want to insert the end that doesn't have the rubber piece on it, the weatherproof rubber piece. So, you can insert the other end. First we have to put a uh, nut on it. <clears throat> Onto this threaded end. which will limit how far it goes into the cable bracket. And we want it so only three quarters inch is, past, is off, the, it's off the end three quarters of an inch. about there and we insert it into the cable mount bracket like so and then put another jam nut 5 16 inch jam nut on the end of it OK, 
Okay, now we have to put this lanyard. There's two of them. This oh, we're only using one right now, onto the end of the cable, and I've already put it on here. We have to use the one and a quarter inch. And I was missing. Well, I know I take it back. I did find this one quarter by one and a, um, one and a quarter inch hex bolt. And then you have to use a spacer that you have left over, 0.39 ID by 0.362 inches. And then insert that into the left hole on this push uh, mechanism, not the center or the right side. And then put a nut on the bottom side. and tighten that up. Okay, now we're going to hand the, we're going to install the plastic grip onto the lift handle tube. And there's a little screw that's sticking up here. You want to leave that on the outside of this. And we're going to use a 5 sixteenths by quarter, one and a quarter inch screw on this and a, and a locking nut and I was short this screw so but I have one of my own it's a little longer than I'd like but uh, I think it'll work so I'll tighten that down okay now we're going to attach the other end of the cable it has the rubber boot on it into this piece that sticks out on this handle that we just put the uh, grip on. So we take this plastic boot off. Take the first the outer jam nut off. And then make sure we, the inner jam nut, we want to adjust so there's three quarter inch of threads exposed. And it's already set that way. <coughs> so, okay, now we put it into the we add the uh, bracket on the lift handle. Okay, so you just insert this through this thing on your handle. There's your handle. We're going to tighten up this jam nut. So there's, we want three quarter inches from the nut to the end of the thread, which I already measured that. And we put this little lanyard on the end. Can't quite just get this, so I'm going to cheat, I guess. <clears throat> Put the lanyard over that part and then use this acorn nut to tighten it on. Like so. Okay, now we're ready to put this long lift handle. rod into this lift handle tube we've been working on. First we have to put some multi-purpose grease on this end. I'm 
and then we'll insert it into here like so and then we're ready to put this puppy onto the tractor okay now we're going to assemble the pivot support brackets to the or pivot support bracket to the two angle support brackets these are the two angle they have an angle on them this is the pivot support bracket and you choose the holes based on size of your tires and the drawing is for a 15 inch it goes there and here but I've got 16 inch so from what I understand I should go here and here so we'll find out if it works but we're using these um, 3 8 inch by 1 inch head hex bolts and then this flanged lock nut okay now we're going to attach the angle support brackets to the um, hitch plates this is hitch plate there's a right and a left one and can be attached with these 3 inch <coughs> hex nuts or screw bolts and nuts again like so one on each side okay I've installed the bracket on the right side here's the left one and this is reversed but it basically goes on like this sits right down in there and I have the right one on here's the bottom of it and to do this try to get some more light on this you have to take this screw off that's holding the spring right there Trying to hold this two hands, sorry guys. Yeah. This spring that holds the um, for the uh, hood to be pulled up, there's a spring that attaches here. So you have to take this screw out and take it out temporarily and it also holds this heat shield on so you take that off and then you can then you can uh, attach the bracket and here's the back end of it it's held in by these carriage bolts and it's a little tricky attaching these underneath because there's not much space so yeah, I've, I used the open end and box end wrench, and then on the front, the very front here, use the um, shoulder bolt, and it has these flat washers, and it's they're gonna it's a little hard to get on because there's not much room underneath. So I use they're gonna use the open end wrench on it. Now I'll show you what the completed one or the one that where it get, needs to go on the left side next. One more thing on the right side before we leave it. Um, this cable is hooked, hooked, held on by this little clamp and they, have, they give you one to replace it with. It's this 
thing right here it's in the package and I didn't realize this thing screws in so when you're taking the the other one out right here realize that it screws in I tried to pop it out with a screwdriver and broke it right here and so if you unscrew it you won't you can save it but they're going they give you they give you an extra one to put back in which is nice okay now we're ready to add the the bracket under the tractor on the left side and I'm going to use the 3 8 shoulder bolt that's going to go in there and then the two um, other bolts that go in there so first off we have to like we did on the other side we have to loosen this bolt here that's holding the the spring that holds the hood on and it also holds on this heat shield so you take those off first and then you just simply put it up there and pop it in place and bolt it on okay I've got the um, spring and the heat shield off the left side and here's the bracket that's going to go on and basically it's just going to fit right over I'm trying to hold this camera at the same time I'm doing this guy sorry it's going to fit right over the shaft there and then be held right in here with the shoulder bolt and then carriage bolts on the other side so those square holes are going to have the carriage bolts at them and this side's cleaner because you don't have that conduit to uh, deal with so it makes it a little cleaner okay there's the bracket on um, like I say it's a little challenge doing these bolts and getting behind to uh, get to the nuts but I got them And there's the heat shield put back on and the spring for the hood and there's the bottom two carriage bolts that are on so you put this on with two three eighths inch carriage bolts and lock nuts and I was missing a lock nut so I used to a regular nut so hopefully it'll stay on for the time being until I get a another lock nut and then the front is held on by the shoulder nut or bolt so got it on now I'm ready to attach the um, other device okay now we're going to install the pivot support and I've already lifted it up and put it in place Here's the bracket, and this pivot support has these pins on each side, and you just lift it up. It's pretty heavy. Terry, lift it up. Put it on those pins on both sides, and the pins are on the oriented the same way on each side. And then we have to put this 
big clevis pin. Trying to show it, my light's kind of bright. In the hole. Like so. And then put the Trying to get oriented, you guys here. Sorry. This clip on the back side, and then it's installed. I've already done the other side. Then we're going to hook up with the blade next. Okay, here's the finished product. Give you some close up here. I had to uh, hurry this project up because we had a little bit of snow left and my wife had to get out to go to work. So I didn't continue the videos until now. But anyway, I had to put this onto here. And I forget the names, I'm sorry. And this simply holds, goes on with this big pin. So that's where you'll take it out and store it. Um, and then this rod goes on with a pin and goes up and ties into the control handle. Like so. And then there's a rod that comes off with a pin. And oh, and I put the tie on to hold the cable in close. There's another tie. I haven't put it on yet. They can go up here somewhere. And of course, I can cut this tie off so it doesn't stick out like that. But this rod then goes down and attaches to this lever on the this mechanism here for the pin. Uh, the picture is not real clear where this goes to me and I actually tried to attach it to this hole right here so don't make that mistake. But uh, And you might have to make some adjustments to this spacing here. I had to actually put these nuts closer to the, the end to get this to pull enough back so this rod would disengage so you can rotate this uh, mechanism. So anyway, I think it went together pretty well. Uh, this, these will actually, this whole thing will disconnect here. We'll pull these out and then this whole thing will come loose and you can store this separate from the mower. And now I'll show you how these operate. Okay, to raise the blade, you just simply pull back on the handle and it'll lock into place. Or you can kind of play with it and as you want. To uh, rotate the blade, we'll put it in the other position. You squeeze on this handle here, and what that's doing is pulling the rods up. I can't get it to rotate while I'm sitting on the machine, so, but it'll rotate like that. Pretty nicely. Let me see. Now I guess, yeah. Take that back, I can do it on the machine. Well, once you get it started. But anyway, so, then to lower the blade, you just simply lift up on the handle and it goes down. So, I think this is pretty easy to operate. So, with that, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you uh, 
want more videos, visit my channel, Harrison4803, and I'll do a follow-up video uh, when we get our next snow and show you how it operates. I did it, I used it a little bit with this last snow we had, but it was raining and melting, um, but I thought it worked pretty well. So that's all for now, YouTubers.